Hello and welcome to SciJoy. Today we're going to talk about snakes with Nick. And I am a little bit afraid of snakes, so this is going to be interesting. I thought for this segment we would talk about reptiles that make good pets and that are commonly kept as pets. Um, the one I'm holding right now is a California king snake. This is one of about two or three species of snakes that you'll see in pretty much any pet shop. They do make really good pets. Um, very easy to take care of. As you can see, they're not really aggressive. Um, something to keep in mind about snakes is they do all eat rodents. A lot of people don't really like that, but something that's really popular nowadays, all my snakes eat um, frozen rodents that you thaw out. You can buy them at most pet stores. Um, this king snake, he's a little bit over a year old. Uh, by the time he's full grown, he'll be close to four feet. And as you can see, very docile. Um, something to keep in mind with king snakes when they're real little babies when they hatch out they're only about that big they can be very wiry um, so they may not be the best snakes to handle a lot if you're looking for something that you can handle right away look for something a little bit bigger um, but they do calm down really well with regular handling so what are all these like there's just there's a stripe at the yep. top and then there's like these spots at the end yeah, there's, the cool thing about California king snakes is they come in a wide variety of colors. Um, like, this one comes from one certain spot in California where they just happen to have this perfect stripe. Some of them have multiple stripes, some of them have perfect bands. Um, this one's black and white, they can be black and yellow, brown and yellow. Um, in captivity there's different forms of albinos where there's white and yellow and purple all together. Um, you can probably find one in just about any color you'd like. This is a corn snake. Corn snakes are a lot like the California king snake where they come in a wide variety of colors. And even the ones found in the wild vary a lot. Um, this particular phase is from South Carolina. Um, farther north you go, it'll be a darker orange. Farther south, they'll get a little bit lighter. They stay a little bit smaller than a California king. Um, they'll still probably get close to four feet though. Um, again, very docile. As babies, they're probably even a little bit more docile than a California King. And this guy, he's a little bit under a year old, so he still has plenty of growing to do. The name comes from the belly pattern. You can see the black and white checkers. Oh. It looks like maize. So that's why they're called corn snakes. Oh, so it doesn't hang out in cornfields? They do hang out in cornfields. Um, farmers actually like them because they hang out in corn silos and they eat all the mice that try to eat the corn. Oh, so, okay. um, Smart gardeners and farmers love having snakes around because they take care of all the bugs and the rodents. And they don't like corn, so... You're no, good. they don't eat corn. So it's better than having a scarecrow? <laughs> right. Got a bunch of snakes? <laughs> Absolutely. Another very common pet snake is the ball python. Uh, a lot of people, like Jacqueline, when they hear the word python, they imagine the 15, 20, 25 foot monsters. Um, there are pythons that do get that big. Ball pythons don't. A really, really big ball python is over four feet. Uh, it's very rare that they even get that big. Most of them are around three. Um, ball pythons make great pets because they're very, very shy and docile. Um, they move very slowly. They're called ball pythons because they'll actually roll themselves into a ball if they get scared, rather than huff and hiss or try to bite or anything. Uh, it's very rare that you see a ball python bite. Why is it moving so much, though? Uh, just because he's a little nervous. <laughs> I'm a little nervous too, and I'm very still. <laughs> and, um, you weren't when the snake came near you. <laughs> ball pythons are another one that you'll find in most pet stores. They do come in a wide variety of colors, um, but most of the ones that you'll see in a pet store are like this. This is what they look like in the wild with kind of the black and gold. And the nicer thing about ball pythons compared to the ones we already looked at, like the king snake and the corn snake, is that they're not very wiry. Um, even when they're little babies, this is a lot of what you see. I mean, they will crawl around, but they're not at all fast. It's not like they're going to shoot out of your hand and run away from you. And ball pythons are so gentle that even Jacqueline is willing to hold one. Why do your face get at me? It's looking at me. It's fine. Hello. So do even Jacqueline can handle it. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> And aside from that, ball python care is pretty much like any of the other snakes we talked about. Um, about a 20 gallon long aquarium, something to hide under a water bowl, and the heat pad. And that's about it. That wasn't that bad. Yeah, ball pythons are known for being a very heavy bodied snake. Um, 
they can actually eat much larger meals. Like in the wild, corn snakes and king snakes, they do eat rodents, but they also eat lizards. Uh, and king snakes will actually eat other snakes, things like that. Uh, ball pythons take much larger meals. Um, they're from Africa, so they eat gerbils, birds, things like that. Um, and they have to store a much bigger meal, so they're a lot heavier bodied. Okay, so that's why they're so yeah. much thicker. Yep. And that's also what makes them slower, which people like. Yes, people like this. Yep. This one's from Australia. That looks wigglier. <laughs> it is wigglier than a ball python. This is called a spotted python from Australia. Um, they're about the same size as a king snake or a corn snake, so they'll only get to about three feet, if that. Um, very handleable, very, very calm. And these are good for somebody if they're looking for something a little more unique, something that you can't find in a pet store, but also does make a really good pet. For something like this, you'd probably have to look online. There's a lot of websites with classified ads. Um, you can also take a look online for reptile shows in your area. Um, you'll usually be able to find these at any reptile show. So how do you know if you're going to be like a good snake owner kind of person? Um, the biggest thing is to be really interested in snakes. A lot of people, they just think a snake is cool, they get it. Uh, snakes aren't the most active creatures. A lot of times if you look into a snake cage, 90% of the time it's just laying there. So if you really have an interest in snakes, um, I would talk to other people that own snakes um, and just see if it's something that's the right fit for you. If you're looking for something that's going to be out crawling around really active, most snakes don't really um, fit that. But my advice would just be to read as much as you can online, find out about whatever kind of snake you want to keep and just see if it's what you're looking for. And how long do most of the, the, the at-home snakes live? Most of them live at least 10 years up to about 20. Um, the oldest snake I've ever had was about 17 and there was one ball python that lived at the Philadelphia Zoo for I forget exactly how long but it was somewhere around 40 years but that's sort of an outlier. Most snakes don't live that long. But around 10 to 15 years is a pretty good average.